Here's a fascinating differential equation that's actually an example from a class of differential equations called the Cauchy-Euler equations. Yes, you heard me right. This is a collab between Cauchy and Euler. And the general structure of the left-hand side is that you have the sum over k from 0 to some integer n of x to the k times the kth order derivative of y with respect to x, and this equals some function of x, which is 0 in the homogeneous case. So how exactly do we solve such an equation? Well, it turns out that we can convert a Cauchy-Euler equation into a second-order differential equation with constant coefficients using a simple substitution where we let x equal e to the t. And before we proceed, let me introduce some notation. Now, I'm going to denote the derivative with respect to x operator by a capital D and the derivative with respect to t operator by a capital delta. So how does this substitution alter the structure of our differential equation? Well, to answer that, we're going to have to analyze the derivative terms. So dy by dx can be written as dy by dt times dt by dx. And we're writing this in operator notation as delta y. And what about this dt by dx term? Well, according to our substitution, dx by dt equals e to the t, correct? So dt by dx should be the reciprocal of e to the t. And we know that e to the t equals x anyway. So dy by dx, uh, dy by dx, which of course, in operator notation, we're writing as capital DY. This equals delta Y by X. And you can transfer the X term to the left-hand side, which implies that X DY equals delta Y. So we've converted a structure in which we had a variable coefficient in the X world into a constant coefficient in the T world, which already seems quite nice. So let's see how it transforms the second derivative now. For the second derivative with respect, uh, the second derivative of y with respect to x, we can write this as the derivative with respect to x of dy by dx, right? And using this equation, we can introduce some cool operator manipulation. Now, according to this e equation, x d is equivalent to delta which further implies that d is equivalent to 1 by x delta. And 1 by x in the t world is just 1 by e to the t, or just plain old e to the negative t. So we can use this result to simplify our, uh, simplify this equation here, or transform this equation completely into the t world. So on the left-hand side, you still are looking for a structure for the second derivative. And on the right-hand side, we can write this now as e to the negative t times the derivative with respect to t of, uh, again, e to the negative t times dy by dt. And now for some product rule stuff. So we have e to the negative t times the derivative of this term here is negative e to the negative t. It's being multiplied by dy by dt plus uh, e to the negative t term and the second derivative of y with respect to t. And if we factor out the e to the negative t term, we have e to the negative 2t, or just plain old 1 by e to the 2t, times negative delta y plus delta squared y, where delta, once again, denotes the derivative with respect to t. And on the left-hand side, remember that we had the second derivative of y with respect to x, which we're writing in operator notation as d squared y. And this term here is just x squared. So if we multiply both sides by x squared, we get the result that x squared d squared y equals, once you factor out this delta operator, delta times delta minus 1 y which is pretty cool. And you can actually prove this general result that x to the k times the kth order derivative of y with respect to x equals this product here, which again is pretty awesome. So yeah, we're going to use 
these results for the first and second derivatives to, to uh, solve our given Cauchy Euler boy. We can now transform our equation completely into the T world, where we know that the first term can be written as delta times delta minus 1 of y minus 3 times um, delta y plus 5y, and the right-hand side transforms into e to the t times the sine of, now that the natural log of x is obviously t. And now we can make use of the linearity of the derivative operator to perform some nice simplification. So you have delta squared minus delta minus 3 delta plus 5 of y being equal to e to the t times the sine of t. And hence we have delta squared minus 4 delta plus 5 of y being equal to e to the t times the sine of t, which, as promised, is a second-order differential equation with constant coefficients, which is quite easy to solve. First up, we need the characteristic solution, which is the solution to the characteristic equation. So delta squared minus 4 delta plus 5 being equal to 0 implies that delta equals, you can solve this using the quadratic formula, you'll get 2 plus minus i which gives the characteristic solution y sub c of e to the 2 times t times some constant c sub 1 times the cosine. Now the imaginary part here is 1, so you have 1 times t, which is just t, plus another constant c sub 2 times the sine of t. And now we're interested in the particular solution that we're, that we're going to solve for using the method of undetermined coefficients. And in case you need some more examples of this technique, then I've provided a couple of links in the description below. As per the structure of the right-hand side of the equation, the particular solution should look like e to the t times a times the cosine of t plus b times the sine of t, where a and b are the coefficients we have to determine. So according to this expression, the derivative of y with respect to t, which we're writing as delta y, equals, um, I'm just going to multiply e to the t here using the distributive property, and this will come in handy when I need to simplify stuff later because there is a lot of simplification going on in the when you're using this technique. So differentiating with respect to t, we get a times e to the t times the cosine of t minus a times e to the t times the sine of t for the first term. And for the second term, you have this uh, b times e to the t times the sine of t, and I'm going to have to move this a bit, yeah, plus b times e to the t times the cosine of t. Okay, cool. And now to figure out the second derivative with respect to t, then again, you're going to get a times e to the t times the cosine of t minus a times e to the t times the sine of t minus uh, a times e to the t times the sine of t minus a times e to the t times the cosine of t and etc etc so yeah a lot of differentiation going on here cosine t and finally we're gonna get b times e to the t times the cosine of t minus b times e to the t times the sine of t. And you may have noticed that there's some nice cancellation. There are a few cancellations going on here as well. For example, the first term and this term cancel out quite nicely. And these two cancel out nicely as well. And then you have identical terms being added up. So the second derivative of y with respect to t equals minus 2 times a times the sine of Oh, sorry about that, forgot the exponential term, um, plus 2b e to the t times the cosine of t. Okay, so we have all the ingredients required, and now all we have to do is plug in this information into our equation and simplify. Now I need a 4 times uh, delta y, so just multiply everything by 4, and you can 
just flip the signs because of the negative sign. Okay, cool. And multiply the y term by 5. Okay, now all I have to do is add stuff up, add stuff, stuff up as per the equation and simplify. A few minutes later. Well, that was fun. So now we have to compare the coefficients of the respective terms on the right and the left hand side. So comparing the coefficients of the e to the t times the sine of t terms, we see that 2a plus b equals 1. And for the e to the t times the cosine of t terms, we see that minus 2b plus a equals 0, which implies that a is just twice of b. So using this information for our equation, we get um, 2 times a is now 4 times b, and 4 times b plus 1 is just 5 times b. So this implies that b equals 1 by 5, and a equals 2 by 5. Okay, so we have those, we have determined the undetermined coefficients. So this gives us the general solution to our differential equation. The y equals first the characteristic solution, which was e to the 2 times t times c sub 1 times the cosine of t plus c sub 2 times the sine of t plus e to the t times 2 by 5 times the cosine of t plus 1 by 5 times the sine of t. And that is the conclusion of today's video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.